Monday. Let's talk real estate. Welcome to Real Talk Eagle Pats. And our special guest today is Sarah Flores. She's the administrative assistant for uh, Justice of the Peace, Precinct 1, Kena Mancha. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. I appreciate you're welcome, you coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Um, give us a little bit of like where, what you do, where you work at. I am the administrative ministry assistant to Judge Mancha. I have been with her for eight years now, and eight this years. this coming March will be nine already. Oh my gosh! Yes, I've been her her assistant there. Okay, so if anybody receives, uh, if anybody's calling like Precinct One or Judge Mancha, you'll be the voice. I am the voice. <laughs> oh, and it's either me or the judge that answers the one. Like it's gonna be I mean, yes. the voice of the face for right now, right? <laughs> yes. Until they get okay, great. And then as far as Precinct One, where is Precinct One? We are located at 1508 Las Quintas Boulevard. Okay, Las Quintas. Um, it's in Las, it's Las Quintas Park. Um, but they, we actually just found out on Monday we might be moving. Uh, we might be moving, might have a new location, but we'll go ahead and let everybody know that. And if we do move, it'll be to the, the tax office. The where, tax office. Yes, where they originally had stated that we would be moving. Oh, so okay. that might be happening um, within the next month or so. Okay. okay. But we will let the public know. Oh, okay. Perfect. And then do you all have a website? We don't. Okay. Uh, Judge Mancha does have her own personal Facebook for as as Justice of the Peace. Um, okay. Now with the the new administration mm -hmm. that we do have with the county, we are actually looking into um, setting one up. Oh, so that wow. way you know they can go online, pay their tickets, you know, or download the applications for evictions, small claims, and all that. So hopefully in the future, find <laughs> right, find the address, find, find the phone number. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, the reason why I asked for you to come in today is because I know there's several different things that buyers and sellers do, uh, like such as owner financing. Mm -hmm. Could you kind of explain to us what is owner financing? Owner finance would be is if you, you have a home, it's mm -hmm. one of your personal homes, mm -hmm. and I want to buy it from you. Okay. But you don't want to go through... And you want to, you know, like, you know, one of your agencies and okay. all that. You just, you want to be the bank, in other words. You want to be the mortgage company. Okay. And you sell me your property. And then we go through a, a, a contract, just like any other contract. Okay. And, you know, you set your terms. You said, you know, I need, you know, X amount of dollars down payment. And then this will be your monthly payment. You set your interest. Anything that you, you know, any anything that you want to put into that contract is what I would have to follow. Oh, okay. So essentially, owner financing is when the owner is the bank. Yes. Wow, I like the way you described that. That's awesome because some people might not understand that. So when they're the bank, they could actually be paying interest to the owner, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the owner will set the terms. Now, I know you mentioned something about contracts and what if they don't follow through in the, in the contract? Like they sign a contract and one or the other party is not following through, the buyer or the seller. Then if they're at any time that they're in breach of their contract, that's mm -hmm. when the, the owner, landlord, whatever you want to call them, okay. they, they do have the right to file an eviction. And they do have a right to ask for the home back. If they say, you know what, they're not a um, they're not considered a tenant, mm -hmm. but they are, you know, they're not um, in good standing. Just like the way the bank would see anybody else not in right. good standing making their mortgage payment. Uh -huh. If they see that, then they have the right to file an eviction, ask for the home back. Oh, wow. Um, in certain cases, rare cases that we have we have had in the office, they might not get it back depending on what ha what the happened. In the, yeah, I mean, there's always two sides to a story or something mm -hmm. like that too. Mm -hmm. So um, just depending, you know, that will also determined by the judge. Wow. So they need to be very careful with whatever is written in their in contract, contract. Yes. Because they could actually lose their home yes. if they're not following through. Okay. And then more or less, how long is this process? How long does the process take? Like. Uh, if they do go see you to file an eviction. Or if somebody's calling me today and they say, you know, I have this renter tenant, or, you know, not uh, paying their rent. They haven't paid in a couple of months, six mm -hmm. months, whatever the case may be. I always tell them you have to give them formal notification, something in writing. Okay. Because I say formal notification, they, you know, might understand, but it's something in writing. Something in writing. Something okay. in writing. By law, legally, they they can give them up to three days. If they give them any more time that, mm -hmm. that's up to them. Okay. Just as long as they give them something in three days, three days or more, if they don't, leave by the time specified by them mm -hmm. then that's when they go to their local jp office to open up the eviction which is you which would be us or any of the other or pre any yes. of the other precincts, precincts. Okay. depending on where the property is located depending okay yeah no. okay and so then do you have any other tips for buyers and sellers like if they're thinking about owner financing or maybe they have questions about a property 
on something like that, I would recommend them to actually speak to an attorney. Have them have them draw. I mean, think of every possible scenario and question, mm -hmm. and put that into contract. I mean, go with an attorney and say, you know what, is this is this correct? Should I add it? Or even maybe contacting one of you all, mm -hmm. like you know, and say, hey, you know, I and I want to do this on my own. You know, for now, you know, maybe in the future they could give you the listing, but for now, you know, I'm trying to do this on my own. Can you help me with this? I don't know if that's something you'll be able to do. And just go through that contract with them and say, you know, am I, am I missing anything? anything? You know, should I add something on here? Because you know, just for my protection, with a, I mean, even if it's a verbal contract, it is still a contract. Mm -hmm. But if you have it in writing, it's so much better because now it's not a he said she said. No, it's in black and, and white. white, and you signed it, and she signed it. Yeah. And I, I liked exactly what you said. It's in black and white. It's a contract. It's in black and white, and people are held accountable for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and then in the end, that's those are the facts. When you go to the when you go to our office and you, we do have a court hearing, mm -hmm. it is what is presented to the judge right oh, there. Oh my yeah. god! Here, yeah, here's, here's the documentation. Here, here are the facts. Oh we, my god! Know. And then that is so true. As real estate agents, we do uh, help buyers and sellers with owner financing, and there are different contracts that we do use. Everything goes through the title company, so it's all recorded. But if anything happens, of course, they go see their local JP, right? Yes. Or their attorney. Yes. And then, well, like, also, too, if you do foreclosures, too, mm -hmm. and then, you know, they purchase a home, and then the previous, uh, well, uh, owner mm -hmm. is still there, then you would have to go to the JP office, too, to evict them. Evict them. Yeah, oh. and evictions are, we can't do it no less than 10 days, no more than 21. So it, it's, it's a, it happens pretty fast. Okay. And so then if somebody wants to get in contact with you, I know we spoke about it briefly uh, when we introduced you. How can they get a hold of you? How can they contact you? At our office, we are mm -hmm. at, the phone number there is 830-757-9201. Okay. Um, and then the address for now is 1508 Left Angeles Boulevard. Okay. And they can always go to the county webpage to go look up all the other JPs. If they don't know which property that it belongs in, they can, usually one of us will be able to tell you if it's an address that we're not too familiar yeah. with or if it's and also not like on a border type line, like, mm -hmm. oh, just like from here to here, it could be yeah. us and from here to here, it could be the other one. Mm -hmm. They can just call the elections department and just ask them, just give them the address and say, I need to know what precinct this belongs in, mm -hmm. and they'll be happy to help. They're okay. They always are. And that's 830-757-4175. Oh, for, for, the, for the different precincts. For the elections, yes. Just okay. whoever answers to say, I know what address does such and such does belong to. And they'll let them know. They'll let them know. Yeah, they're always oh, happy to help. Well, that's a lot of information regarding owner financing and any evictions. And you're very knowledgeable. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you so much for sharing all this information with us, Sarah. I really appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. And our property for the week, our spotlight property for the week is... Uh, 209 Imelda. It's in the Hopedale area. Beautiful home. It's a must-see. It has a pool. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, you like, and you comment below. Comment. How can Sarah, uh, does she have any questions? Do you have any questions for Sarah or Ms. Flores? Let her know. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.